It took only a couple months that COVID-19 had spread all over the world after its first case was detected in Wuhan, China. The impact of the pandemic was huge. On March 11, 2020, World Health Organization, WHO, declared COVID-19 a pandemic. Numerous countries had to shut down their borders and lock down their cities, and people had to suffer from economic recession. As of 2022, more than 539 million people around the world had got COVID, and 6.3 million people lost their lives. In the U.S., about 86 million people have got COVID, and more than 1 million people's lives have been claimed. With government's actions and increased vaccination rates, things are getting better, but the aftermath of the pandemic is still visible. But the human history has always coexisted with diseases. We have never been actually free from such epidemics. The word epidemic is from Greek words. Api means on and demos means people as in democracy. Similarly, pandemic is also from Greek words with prefix pen meaning all. And there are two main agents of diseases when it comes to epidemics, viruses and bacteria. A virus needs to permeate into hosts, usually through respiratory organs to survive. A virus can't live without hosts, so it is not considered a living thing. It is usually treated with vaccines, and a lot of diseases that we are familiar with, including COVID, fall into the virus category. On the other hand, bacteria usually permeates through mouths or wounds. Unlike a virus, bacteria can survive without any hosts. And they are much bigger than viruses, from 10 times to 100 times bigger. Diseases such as tuberculosis, cholera, and food poisoning are usually because of bacteria, and they are treated with antibiotics. Due to its easily contagious character, the epidemics that spread quickly and easily are most likely viruses. The earliest epidemic was recorded more than 2,600 years ago. In 430 BC, during Peloponnesian War, the disease that caused fever, thirst, bloody throat, and red skin was spread throughout the countries like Libya, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Athens. It says almost two-thirds of the population's lives have been claimed. The disease is suspected to have been typhoid fever. The Black Death, also known as bubonic plague, is probably the most famous pandemic in human history along with COVID. It has taken one-third of the European population in the 14th century. People who got this disease had sudden high fever and chills, became intolerant to light, had swollen lumps, and they painfully died. The plague is estimated to have killed more than 25 million people. And the influence of the Black Death was so huge that some argue that it led to the collapse of the feudal system. As the number of peasants decreased, the workforce also decreased, which led to a loss of landowners' power, and eventually it led to the change in the feudal system. Smallpox also coexisted with humans for thousands of years. Throughout the history, smallpox is estimated to have taken more than a billion people's lives. In the second century Rome, smallpox has taken more than 500 million people's lives. It is believed to have infected humans first about 12,000 years ago, and the evidence can be found everywhere. Smallpox virus was found on Ramesses V, who was the pharaoh of ancient Egypt 3,200 years ago. In Siberia, the virus was also detected in a well-preserved female mummy that is known to be about 300 year old. Smallpox is also known to have been a significant factor in history. During the colonization of the American continent, the population in America decreased from 60 million to less than 5 million. And the diseases that Native Americans were not immune to are known to be one of the biggest factors of their fall. And smallpox was one of them. It took one-third of the Aztec Empire's population and more than half of the Inca Empire's population. But smallpox is the first epidemic that humans have ever overcome. Since the creation of its first vaccine by Edward Jenner in 1796, WHO launched a plan to eliminate smallpox in 1967. 
After the last known case in Somalia in 1977, smallpox has become the first epidemic that is officially declared to be eradicated in 1980 by WHO. Spanish flu is another notable epidemic in the 20th century. It was spread all over the world during the First World War. More than 500 million people are estimated to be infected with the virus and at least 50 million people's lives were taken. Even along with the advance in technology, 21st century was not safe from epidemics because of globalization and economic expansion. In 2003, more than 8,000 cases of SARS were reported and more than 700 people were killed. In 2009, over 90,000 cases of swine flu were confirmed with more than 400 deaths. MERS in 2012 has taken more than 800 lives, confirmed 2,500 cases with over 30% of mortality rate. And lastly, in 2020, as we all know, COVID-19 hit. As we can see, human history has never been free from epidemics. Then, how are we dealing with it? When we take a look at WHO's global pandemic phases, it shows what strategic actions should be made. There are six pandemic phases of WHO. Interpandemic period, phase 1 and 2, is a plan and preparation stage where the virus is transmitted among animals only. Pandemic alert period, phase 3, 4, and 5, is an emergency and preemptive response stage where human infections are detected, but in small and larger clusters between 25 to 50 cases over a few weeks. And lastly, the pandemic period is phase 6, where the cases reported are widespread in general population, as we all know from COVID-19. Since its foundation in 1948, WHO has declared pandemics three times. Hong Kong flu in 1968, swine flu in 2009, and COVID-19 in 2020. Governments around the world would take different actions based on WHO's pandemic phases. For example, the federal government in the US initiates dialogue with WHO in phase 3 and prepares to implement screening and travel restrictions. In Phase 4 and 5, the government activates domestic quarantine stations and prepares to limit domestic ports of entry. And in Phase 6, the pandemic period, they activate domestic emergency medical personnel plans, limit non-essential domestic travels, and ensure pandemic plans are activated across all levels. Even with those actions, it wouldn't be as effective if there's no medicine to cure the disease. But making vaccines usually takes a long time, for about a decade, because it costs a lot of money and there's potential to fail. So it usually goes through several stages. First, it normally takes about 2 to 5 years to find ways to induce an immune response at a molecular level. Next, it takes up to 2 years to test the vaccines in animals to see if they're safe and compatible with humans. Then, it needs to be tested in humans for assessing the safety and immune response. Even after they are made, it can take up to two years to get approval from regulatory authorities such as FDA. It is only after going through all this process that the vaccine can be accessible to people. But as we know, COVID-19 vaccines were developed in a year. How was this possible? As COVID was becoming a growing concern for every country, an unpresented collaboration among the public and private sectors made it possible to happen quickly. Billions of dollars were invested to develop and deliver vaccines globally. With the collaboration and investments, every process was able to be done within a few months. And as a result, we can now see our lives going back to normal. However, experts predict that there are much more to come. Due to global warming, the permafrost is melting exponentially. Arctic sea ice is declining at a rate of 13% every decade. It will cause the sea level rise, which will lead to flooding in many people's homes. But unfortunately, what we should worry about is not just flooding. When the permafrost is thawing, it has the potential to release numerous viruses and bacteria that have never been exposed to us before. It doesn't necessarily mean that those viruses and bacteria infect humans, but if they do, 
a lot of them have potential to be antibiotic resistant and therefore lethal to us. Coexistence with epidemics has never stopped. Rather, it seems that there will be much more viruses to deal with. But if we prepare for those potential dangers with strict protocols and lessons from the past, we can overcome them.